Everybody, J.M. Mannion here at the MPC Photo Gym, and I am here with multi-IFBB Pro bikini winner, bikini winner in 2022. Jordan Lee. Okay, Jordan, let's list all the contests that you have won this year. Okay, starting with Legion Sports Fest, and then we went on to Titans in Anaheim, and then we finished with the Rising um, Phoenix Wings of Strength in Arizona. So some pretty big contests. Pretty big contests, yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Now, we, we have, we've talked about this previously, but I said to you after, after the Legion thing, I said, and the other shows, I said, you're finally getting to this back-to-back -back competition thing, getting the hang of it, right? You're finally getting the hang of it was what you said, I believe, verbatim. <laughs> yeah, finally gotten the hang of it after many, many, many years. Because she had done the Arnold UK before the Legions, that's why, and I saw her there. That was the warm-up, yeah. So that was the warm-up that went well. We placed third there, and then we rolled. We came back to the U.S. and rolled right into those shows, and it was nothing but goodness. Okay, so doing all those contests, I know people like to say, why do people keep doing contests? Yeah. But there is, there is really a method to this. There is. So let's go back to the Arnold 2021 last year when... I had the most lackluster performance probably of my career. Worse than the Olympia? Yes. <laughs> it was worse than the Olympia. The Olympia was a little bit better, but that was the worst performance that I've had in a really long time. And the reason was because I didn't have any practice before that show. It had been maybe like a year and some change um, before I had, before that, that I had been on stage. So I was like, yeah, I'm mentally prepared yada, yada. And then I got on stage and I was not prepared. Um, I just, it wasn't me. So the reason why I did multiple shows this year was because I learned that I have to practice in order to be comfortable. Um, it's not for bragging rights, you know, in regard to winning or anything like that, but it's simply with me, more practice makes me better. Fully suiting up, getting my suit on, tan on, um, heels on the stage, getting in front of the, the judges, actually going through it in real life, it allows me to really perfect my craft. I can't just get on the stage after being out of the game for, for 12 months. That just doesn't work for me. <laughs> well, honestly, when, when I, the reason, reason I'm referencing the Olympia is because when she got on stage, it just, if you know Jordan, that was not her on stage. It wasn't. No. Um, when you know somebody is outgoing and bubbly and always smiling and laughing and they get on stage and you don't get that same energy and vibe, vibe from them, you definitely know something is off and something's wrong. Um, and I just, I didn't bring that to stage, uh, but we did this year. <laughs> yeah. The, the Olympia, I mean, she's, I, I, let's be honest. I know Debbie told you, asked you what, 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 what was that up there? Right. Yeah. Just like that. What was that? What was that? <laughs> And I was like, it was trash. That's what it was. It was trash. Um, and, you know, I told myself, like, that's never going to happen again. So I have to do everything in my power, you know, to fix things internally, fix things in my heart, mind, body, and soul to make sure that I'm able to perform and be the me that I am. So we've done the work and now we're in a really, really good place. Um, three wins later. And feeling really, really good going into the Olympia. So that mental element is, it's 99.9% .9 of the game. It really is. And a lot of people don't understand that. So stress is one of those things that you can't fight stress. You have to just minimize it and let it go and fix whatever is going on in your life. So you can make sure that you're whole and make sure that your mind's right. So you can perform because your, your mind, it affects everything physically. So, yeah, well, besides being a competitor with you being a coach, this is also a good example to the people that you coach that everything doesn't always go perfect. And you, what are you going to do to make it better or fix it? Exactly. You know, it's <laughs> being an athlete. It helps me be a better coach because I've gone through all of those ebbs and flows, you know, winning shows to getting knocked out back down into the second call outs and having to fight to get out of the second call outs and, and climb back up to the top. You know, there's nothing over here. That's an overnight sensation. <laughs> like, you know, the work has been put in and the time has been put in and everybody has to do it. Of course, there's some anomalies. Some people just come out and they're just like knockout and it's incredible. 
but th that's an anomaly. That's not the rest of the general population. You know, you, you got to go through the process. You got to make sure that you're getting that experience and doing the shows and, um, really understanding like what it takes, you know, all of that builds character. And for me, it built a lot of character and I had to go through those ebbs and flows. Like if I didn't have highs and lows throughout my career in bodybuilding, I wouldn't be the competitor I am today because it's like, if I was always winning and always doing well, I wouldn't know how to lose. And you have to know how to lose as gracefully as you win. That is a true champion. And that's in any sport, actually. That's in any sport, any sport. And bodybuilding is a sport, by the way, guys. For all the people that say it's not, it is a sport. So in my opinion, one of the toughest. Because every single thing that you do affects your body. From the, the minute you open your eyes to the minute you close them. Even when your eyes are closed. Because sleep, it's such a big thing. You know what I mean? So it, 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 there, there are huge mental elements that you really need to be locked and loaded, right? Like you guys have seen a lot of people compete over your time and you know when somebody's off you know you don't even have to have a conversation you can just see them on stage and you're like what's going on and you know it and that affects you that affects how and when you can see that when they're on the olympia stage that's not good at all no that's not good that's the biggest stage in the freaking world that's the time you don't want whatever is going on in your heart in your mind to show you know so you better do the work <laughs> before that date to pull it together so you can bring your absolute best because look you may have a better physique than a girl that places ahead of you but her mind was 100 percent, and she had the performance of her lifetime and maybe her physique was not as good as yours, but the, what she brought to stage that day blew years away. That's how it goes sometimes. And that's another reason why you have to have an open mind when you're competing. We all want to win. We all want to come first place. But at the end of the day, there's only one person that can get first place. And that's the other reason why you have to have that mental toughness, because if something does not turn out how you anticipated or wanted, you have to be able to have that goldfish mindset which you forget about it in 10 seconds. What is it? I think Dory, you know, finding Nemo Dory, she never remembers anything. You literally have to sometimes find that Dory in yourself so you can let it go and move on to the next. Because if you're dwelling on something that didn't go your way, that's just going to cripple you and you're never going to move past it and get better. Yeah. So I had to find the Dory in me so I can move on. And I did. Is that a pun because of who's the champion? No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I don't no. know. <laughs> well, she is the champ. No, there's no, absolutely not. But um, when it is that bump in the road, you, you got to just leave it behind. You're not going to put it in reverse and go over it again and do no, it again. No, what do you, you can't. What are you going to do? Like, you, no, it's just one of those things. You just got to forget about it. And you have to continue to move forward, you know, because if you're stuck in the past, then you're stuck there. There's no, there's no ability to focus on what's ahead of you. And that's so important. So, yeah. And like we've talked about before doing it on stage or in a practice room or a gym or wherever is not the same. It's not the same. And going back to why I did so many shows this year, I needed the practice because as you mentioned, practicing at home or practicing at the gym is not the same as when you're suited up and you're on a huge stage with hundreds of eyeballs looking and thousands of eyeballs looking at you. Right. So like we were talking about before at the Arnold in the UK, when I was in my back pose and I took my eye off of my focus for a second and I looked at the jumbo screen and I went to do my hair flip, it messed up my spatial reasoning. So I stumbled, right. When you're at home, or you're in a comfortable setting that you know everything like the back of your hand, the chances of that happening is so much smaller than a new environment. So you have to get out of your comfort zone and get into those new environments so that the, the chances of those mistakes happening are smaller. And that's why I was like, okay, I'm never going to miss a hair flip ever again. I need to get my butt back on stage and continue practicing because I can nail it at home all day. That's easy. Right. But what matters is what you bring to stage. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. And I know like people, they'll, they'll say, well, why is so-and-so doing another contest? Because they won this contest. I said, I'll reference when Laura Lee was here and she did her interview. She said people were kind of ragging on her for doing the Pittsburgh Pro after she won the Arnold. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's like, but why wouldn't I do Pittsburgh Pro? First, I've never been in the contest. Mm -hmm. 
and she goes, but it's another chance to get on stage, get in front of the judges who are going to be judging her again, probably at the Olympia, because everybody on that Pittsburgh Pro Panel judges at the Olympia. Exactly. The Pittsburgh Pro Panel is an Olympia panel, and she is the first bikini champion to have won the Arnold, Columbus, Pittsburgh, and New York, the New York Pro within a five week span. It's never been done before. So she saw the, think of how many bikini champions there are many. Exactly. And she's the first to do it back to back to back to back. So kudos to her. She, you know, she had an incredible season and she's going into the Olympia with that momentum, you know, which it's how it has to feel good. So love to see it. Yeah. So, but, but, um, yeah, people, you know, like you said, you were doing this, like you said, not for the accolades, but to get the you, you back on stage. Right? And I finally, finally found me and it feels so good. But like, the thing is, is like, this has happened more than once. Like when I used to wear my hair straight, Debbie, don't kill me. Um, <laughs> when I used like to, when you turn pro, right. When I turned pro, at, I remember that at the North Americans, <laughs> I, I looked like a little dolly. I had like the little curls like this and like the purple suit, you know? It was cool, but it, like it wasn't me. And then I started wearing my hair curly, and then and with the blue suit or the turquoise suit. And then that's when I found myself. And then you know had some highs and lows, right? And had some really low lows, like the Arnold twenty twenty one, which was horrendous. And then the Olympia twenty twenty one, ugh, cringe. Um, the, the, the bad part <laughs> is, some people would like to have that horrendous that you had. Well, right, and <laughs> and you know, someone's one hundred, someone's fifty percent is going to be someone else's 100%. You know what I mean? So I don't say that to discourage, but my own journey, you know, I've had highs and lows within my own journey and I've had to rediscover myself more than one time. Like I had to rediscover myself this year, you know? Um, and like even going like last year, um, uh, Arnold uh, Columbus 2021, I was a nervous wreck. I had an anxiety attack two days before the show, a pretty bad one. And I was like, look, you just have to say and get on stage. And that's what I did. And I had fun. Like I, it was that moment where I was like, you know what? I just need to let, let it all go. Let everything go and just do your thing and perform. And it turned out, it turned out at that point that had been the greatest accomplishment in my career at that point took some time off and then went to the Arnold UK. And then by the time I got to the Arnold UK, I was just feeling myself, like feeling the vibes. I'm like, yes, like I'm here. I have arrived and it felt so damn good. And then we get to, you know, we get to Legions, nailed it. Anaheim, nailed it. Uh, Wings of Strength, nailed it. Like that confidence exists, but there are things that you have to go through. You have to go through the trials and tribulations to truly find yourself because we all go through phases in life, right? And it takes a couple crappy ones to arrive to the final one, you know? So here we are. And this is a good attitude to be taken into the interview because I always say, like people ask me every year, who do you think is going to win the Olympia? No offense to any former or current champions, but on any day, they can have their bad day, and that's whenever they get beat. Exactly. What matters is how you show up on that day. The 16th of December is the day before the Olympia, and you could look banging, but if you don't show up amazing and at your peak on the 17th, the 16th didn't matter. It is all who shows up on that day, that minute, that hour that the judges are looking at you. That's what's most important. And, I, and you know, there's the old phrase, you're only as good as your last contest. No, you're not. You're only as good as the day of the contest. I couldn't agree more with you. I couldn't agree more. Like the, the body is such an incredible thing. You know, like day one day you could be in shape and ready to go. And the next day your body's like, nope, you know, it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to a lot of us competitors. Um, and it's just one of those things like you have to be able to manage all of the different variables that can impact that. And of course, life happens and there are some things that are out of our control. But with the things that are in our control, we have to do our very best to try and manage them best we can. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to grow as an athlete. Exactly. And I feel like to grow as a human being as well too, right? Because much of the things that we go through in this sport, we can take these lessons in our day-to-day -day lives. And I know I certainly have, and I've learned 
a, a lot, you know, um, from competing since 2015, you know, and I, I feel like I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be the Jordan I am here today without the sport. So there's so many valuable things that you can learn from it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was talking like, uh, earlier we had Angela Borges here doing her road to the Olympia and she talked, she was talking in the interview about how she's taken all the critiques from the judges from her being second at last year's Olympia, second at this year's Arnold, second at the Boston Pro, what she needs to do to finally win it, yes. to win the big shows. I mean, she won the Pittsburgh Pro. That's her biggest win, yep. the very first one. But now she's been like the bridesmaid at all of the other contests. Right. And, and what did she do? What, what did she do that was different? Did She took the time off. We haven't seen her on stage in quite... Since Boston. Since, since Boston. She's taken quite some time off to make the improvements because obviously something she was doing, it it wasn't allowing or there, there was something that she wasn't doing that allowed her to move up one more spot. So she took the time off. Hopefully she figured it out. You know, we're, we're going to see in a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, but it goes to show that even the best athletes in the world, they take those chunks of time off to make the improvements, whether it's to your physique or whether it's to your mental or your family life. Um, it's so, inc it's so mission critical that we do that so that we can come back our best. Yeah, I mean, and she she kept stressing it in the interview with, yeah. you know, I, I took what the judges said and I've been working and working on it. And, you know, she's she's hyper pumped for the Olympia this yeah. year, which that's that's the kind of attitude that you need to have, not want to have, but need to have going into the Olympia. You have to have that excitement there, because if you go in lackluster, you're probably going to perform lackluster. And that's not what the judges want to see, you know, so. Going back to her feedback, when they give us feedback, it's all very specific and individualized to us. We all have incredibly different structures and shapes and physique. And yes, of physiques, and of course, there is a standard, but what feedback they may give one athlete doesn't necessarily mean it applies to you. The feedback they give you directly applies to you. So that's what you need to work on. And they remember. So if you're not making those changes, they're going to remember. So if she didn't take her time off and she just brought the same package every time, what would she do? She would probably get second or maybe go down, you know? And she said she's excited and she wants the judges hope they see that she listened to what they said. Exactly. And they pay attention. Yes, they are looking at hundreds of bodies every weekend, but they take notes and they pay attention. Yeah. As, and for you as both a coach and a competitor, I think what people don't realize, especially the NPC judges, but in the pro league too, I pro league too, is the judges are have, they have notes on everybody. So when you come, they're not giving you and the person behind you the same, the same critiques. Nope. If you stay for your feedback, you're going to get that. Even if it's going to take you an hour, it's worth it. Which we're always the last ones to leave the venue yeah. because we're waiting in line for that feedback. And that is so valuable. We put so much time and effort into this sport and what we do in competing that if you're not going to do it 100%, what's the point of even doing it? You know, just investing and not sacrificing. It's an investment that extra hour after to talk to the judges it could make or break somebody getting their pro card, somebody winning a show, somebody winning the Olympia, winning the Pittsburgh, right? Just, you got to do things properly and you've got to do things the right way. And most importantly, you have to be patient. So if one of the judges say you need to add more muscle, that doesn't mean get on stage in two weeks. That means get your butt home and take some time off, right? Put on the muscle, enjoy your friends, enjoy your family, become human again, because us bodybuilders, we get really robotic, eat, train, sleep, eat, train, sleep, you know? So we can't let our support systems and the very things that made us, which is our family, fall by the wayside. We still owe it to them to be ourselves and give them our love because at the end of the day, at that competition, they're going to be the ones cheering us on. They're going to be the loudest ones cheering us on. If something doesn't go our way and we're heartbroken, they're going to be the ones consoling us. So we have to remember that life is also important because when your life is balanced, then your bodybuilding career is going to be good because you're whole and you're fulfilled. So I'm happy to tie it all back. I'm happy that Angela took that time off because she's going to be so refreshed. She's going to be and so And she's refreshed. arguably the winning, the most winningest uh, wellness competitor we've ever, we've ever had. Coming into the Olympia, that's a big deal. I mean, that's a big deal. So she, she, she's going to be coming in confident and feeling fresh.
Yeah. And the other thing is, I sometimes, I'll see the winners getting in line to get their critiques, and I hear snide remarks, and this is any division, it's not just bikini, what do they need a critique for? They won. Well, they still want, they want to continue. Look, the, sh the three shows that I won this year, I had feedback from all of them. It doesn't matter if you placed first or if you placed second. You, one, you still have to be humble. Two, you have to have the ability to lose as gracefully as you can win. No one is above anything. So whether you lose or you win, get that feedback. It's super important. So, I mean, and again, the judges, they, they take notice. Like if you won and you just walk away and you don't even get, and you don't even give them the time to even just say, what did you think? Like, what did you think? And thank you. Thank you for all you do. Like, yeah. that's kind of like, ooh, like, you know, it's important to still remember those things. You know, I, I'm always going to get my feedback. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not letting that go. <laughs> so you're, so you are ready for this year's Olympia. I'm ready. This is, this is the Jordan that we've been waiting to see. This is the Jordan that you guys are going to see. Absolutely. Yes. I'm, I'm excited and I feel good. And, you know, I finally really, really come into my own. Like, um, your girl's feeling herself. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And, but the thing is, is like, I'm having fun with it. Like, it's natural. It's not like super scripted or super staged. It's just flowing from what's inside of me, what's inside my heart. And that's how I'm able to perform. It's not just competing anymore. It's performing and it's entertaining. And I've finally found my way because that's what we are. We're athletes who entertain. So. Yes. Okay. So since you brought up about you having straight hair and we now see, you know, you have your, your naturally curly hair yeah. changing the subjects. Let's talk about the, we, we, we can still talk about that curly hair girl shoot that we're way past over a year and people still talk about it all the time. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Cause we're the best. Besides you being in it. Cause we're the best. <laughs> Because girly girl, curly girls are the best. We're colossally badass. Can I say ass? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Debbie's going to kill me, but she loves me. And I love her. <laughs> no, us curly girls. I mean, that's the truth. The bikini champion's in that curly hair shoot. Yes, the bikini champion is in the curly girl shoot. Maybe another bikini champion. Um, <laughs> eventually. I'm coming. I'm not playing. Um, <laughs> but I mean, look. Booty curls smiles like you can't beat that water like it was just the other thing going back to energy was the energy on that shoot was like everything like that's what you want when like you're spending a weekend like shooting with a group of people we had just like such a really good chemistry and a great bond even though we all got really 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 sick when <laughs> the water got rough and we almost went over a board uh but we still toughed it out we didn't even turn around we still shot for like what two three hours after that yeah. and then we got that that amazing shot at the tip of the boat where it's kind of like um what would you call this like a, the, not bow. a truck, the what the bow the bow that was after we got rocked and the photos still were amazing. Um, so it's definitely going to be tough to top. So, yeah. Well, I know you keep asking about when there's going to be a part two, but the person you need to talk to is over there. I know. I, I got to butter her up. <laughs> I got to butter her up. But uh, I, I'm confident she's going she's gonna to allow it. Why wouldn't she? We're curly. I mean, come on. Duh. But, I mean, we're almost 18 months since it happened. And I literally... Every month, I've heard something from somebody bringing that up. It's, it's, I've never heard it from any other shoot. Well, all I got to say is to the people, like, expect another one to happen because it's going to. And, but, like, the thing is, is from the initial time we play, we're talking about it in 2019, it was two years that went by before we actually did it. So, I mean, more time to better for us to plan and for us to just get better. So, hey, yeah. I'm here for it. Okay. Now, since... Since you brought up booty, the last time we stood in front of this wall, I made a statement to you that I said by 2024, wellness is going to be the most dominant women's division in the NPC, NPC worldwide, and IFBB Pro League. And you told me never. Yeah. Do you still stand by your statement? I stand by mine. I still stand by my statement. Bikini is going to rule. <laughs> Sorry, wellness. <laughs> Sorry. Bikini, but we're, we're here to stay. And our numbers are not going anywhere. They're only increasing. So... 
Okay, so that's it. That's it. I, I told you by the 2024 Pittsburgh. Sure, sure. Yes, we'll we'll find out. We're gonna have this conversation again 2024 May before Pittsburgh um, or after Pittsburgh, whichever. We'll one. do it before. And I know you want to see me eat my words in front of this logo. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna win the bet. But we only had a handshake bet. But I know you're on the hook. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's it. Bikini, bikini for life. Sorry, wellness. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, don't think I stand that. by it. I stand by it. That's it. And look, don't hate on the bikini booties, okay? Don't hate on them because they're glorious as well. Even in the off, especially in the off season. What were you saying on the boat? They were colossal, juicy, juicy. <laughs> W's gonna really kill me. <laughs> juicy, juicy booties, <laughs> juicy booties, juicy curls. That's it. That's the key to life. You have a curly girl in your life. It'll never be the same. You know this. Yeah. I tell Mark that all the time too. Right. He knows for sure. 100%. We're just the best. So you're right. You're absolutely right. You put me on the spot now. I know. You like this, don't you? I know. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a bit. All right. So listen, if you want to see the biggest and arguably the best Bikini Olympia ever, go to MrOlympia.com, get your tickets, get your hotel. If you can't make it, buy the pay-per-view. Yes, buy that pay-per-view, but we really hope to see you in person in Las Vegas on December 17th. Jordan is coming to that Bikini Olympia stage to do some damage. But just say it, to win. I'm coming to win. Watch out. All right, perfect place to, to end this. All right, JM. Jordan. Okay, signing up for NPCNewsOnline.com, and we will see you soon. <laughs>